Well, yeah, we're going to do our recap first. Before, yeah, so yesterday, before we get to that, our recap, recap, and what was we asking ourselves? What was questions? What? Oh, what's making somebody fall asleep? So you want to be awake. Dinner. Dinner. So we got it now. Food puts people to sleep. And food is equal to death. So this writing we read and shoot straight to the hip. So now we're going to do our recap by our great reader. Give her a round of applause. Love is the nature of life. Love is also the way to immortality. Love is the nature of life. Love is the way to immortality. That's powerful. Love conquers all things. Here we go. The word Uyir Nilai means both the nature of love as well as immortality. This atom-like atom -like life energy or love energy must be developed by feeding it with more and more love. Oh, stop right there. Now that's the key. She said the atom like energy or the love energy. So atom like energy and love energy is the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just the play on words. Because if you just tell people you need more love, they're going to go look for a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know, they don't know it. I just got to love people. That's what we're thinking. <laughs> but we're talking about the atom like energy that you get through meditation. Oh, man. All right, let's roll. Slowly it starts growing. It should be developed to such a stage that one day it covers the whole physical body and even goes beyond like a field. That's, the, that's it right there. Oh, man. You have to develop it. And it will start growing, just like if a flower is growing. That's why they call it like the tree of life. And it will get bigger and bigger until it what? Until it passes beyond the physical body. Until it passes beyond the physical body. That's what we're saying. It's an energy thing on a breath journey. And it got nothing to do with starving yourself, beating up on yourself, trying to become something. Just stay up under the energy. Oh, man. Life is the protector of body from decaying and dying. Life is the protector of the body from decaying and dying. Now, let's use another word. Love, love is energy. That love energy. Atomic life energy. You get that through meditation. When we were just meditating, it changed the whole room, didn't it? We're just up there shooting energy at each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is evidenced in the fact that the moment life force leaves the body at the time of death, the body starts decaying. The body starts decaying when the life force left. Therefore, develop your life force through love, energy, and encompass your physical body. So we got to put two plus two together. If it's all about the energy now, develop the energy and watch it grow. People, that's all people need to put together. The breath here and journey ain't spooky. See, if you fasten your way into it, all you're doing is just get rid of something, you're going to keep losing weight and getting skinny. Or do you ain't got enough life force energy in it? Just go meditate. You still can eat while you meditate. We ain't say stop. <laughs> there was masters in the past who had great energy, walking around on the planet now, eating. But they did it through meditation, I tell you that. That's where the power is at. Oh, let's do this. All right, let's keep reading. This will protect the body from disease and decay. That will protect the body from disease and decay. So that's health. This is a health message. For the first time, the body becomes immune from wound, unless one wills it at the case of Christ. Right, you're going to get hurt if you want to get hurt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> And, and I heard, like I, I know that many masters they do that to give their disciples an opportunity to serve them. Mm -hmm. They will like uh, they will manifest some type of illness, right. so the disciple will like serve the master in a way that otherwise they can't come that close to them. Right. They'll bring their vibration down purposely. Right. So that person will come and massage. They will bring medicine. They will many things because other because all this love energy is coming through affection. Yeah. And so the master is the embodiment of that love energy. Right. And so the more that the disciple develops attachment for the guru, the guru gives everything to the disciple. Absolutely. You heard that say that? But otherwise, if it was too high with the energy, a lot of people can't get near them. Mm -hmm. Let's hear this style. There was one uh, guy named Matt Grandmaster Sykes. 
You go to meditate with him, you fall asleep. <laughs> the energy was high. You'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just that real. So that's why in Asiatic country, they'll be saying, come here, point the finger. They'd be like this. You know, because back in the day, those bastards were energy that high. And doing like this, they weren't shaking hands. <laughs> it's too high. That's where that come from. Oh, this is good. And my mother do that all the time, make herself sick so we could go serve her. <laughs> 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 Must be she's a great person. Right. She gave birth to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Kiss it right here. No, right here. <laughs> Earlier when a woman touched his back, touched his garment from behind, he turned back and asked, who touched my garment? It shows that he was covered with a field of bioelectricity or love energy. Now listen to that part. I remember one time, because when your energy field get big, you can feel stuff before it even get to you. You can feel it. Now I remember one time, I know this is kind of a, a bad story, but this guy went through this apartment building and killed six people in different apartments. But one guy said he shouldn't have made it that far. If they was in tune, they should have felt something was wrong. Mm -hmm. Everybody was so dumbed down in vibration, they didn't know that danger was there. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is powerful. And I remember one time in my travels, I felt something not to go that way. And sure enough, I was correct. There was danger there. I didn't notice it until I got up. And I said, look at my body working for me. That's why I didn't go that way. Oh man, you start listening to yourself. It told the truth. The body always tells the truth. We don't lie. That's wild, ain't it? <laughs> oh man, let's roll with it. Now life is inside the body. You should place your body inside life. Life is inside the body. We know that. Everybody knows that. But place your body inside life. Life is all around us, but you want to get deeper into the game. With energy in tune with it. Oh man, this is good, ain't it? <laughs> you should develop your field of life energy to such a high level. They say Buddha's life field covered some 200 miles. 200 miles. All the sentient beings, even inorganic beings within that field, felt the bliss within, with Buddha being nearby. It is reported. They even showed you in that movie E.T. When you die, you ever see that movie E.T.? And they knew he died because the flower died. They were like, he's gone. Did they see the flower coming back? No, he's alive. <laughs> but you know, even though that's a movie, that's what we do. You change environments. I do it all the time. We all do. I'd like to say something, too. The next time you guys are on your own and you decide to do a meditation where you're increasing your bio feel, like intentionally, kind of like in some of the guided meditations I've been doing, mm -hmm. and then if you go out and you're around the public in a store or something, pay attention to how people Right. Pay attention to you. Oh man, this is good. Pay attention to it. That's a powerful yeah, stuff. Really expand your energy and just see. Oh man. <laughs> this is good, ain't it? It's all energy work. Let's roll. Non eating stops the poison from food being accumulated in the atom of life force, and the former effects of karma are clean permanent. Oh man, non-eating stops the poisoning of the life force energy. Is that what they say? Mm -hmm. Non-eating stops the poison, so all foods is poison. Both meat and plants. It's, that's why you ain't got to jump right away, but notice what it is. You're just an energy being. That's who you are. You're developing into it. I like your testimony when you figured out just running, you can run longer with less food. That's good, ain't it? And he ain't the only one saying this. A lot of people saying it now. A biker will tell you. Anybody who's dealing with that. You don't want to sit up there and eat a heavy meal and then go out there. Uh-uh. It's all about lightening up. But see on the breath of their knowledge coming on the scene, we're showing people how to build up the uh, central nervous system, the cells of the body with a higher energy flow through meditation. You add that with the physical exercise, you off to the races. 
Oh man, this is good, ain't it? <laughs> oh man. Gotta love it. The atom of life energy is made as pure as possible. That is why Tiru Balubar says, Unamai Ulatu Ilir Nila. Non eating leads to immortality. Non eating leads to immortality. And they say you'll be an immortal. It leads to it. It's the gateway. Like I said, you can stop when you want to. This is good, eh? If you don't want to stop, you can keep going. That's why there's higher levels of doctrines out there where you can take this up into light. You know how like beat me up, Scotty? This is the spaceship right here. It's already traveling through space. It's just tra traveling in lower regions. You know, the bottom of the gas. When you start transforming the vehicle, we got things we don't even know what's about to happen yet. Really? <laughs> Man, but we know it. Last night we were talking about um, Brahmacharya, celibacy. Right. And there's one story, and, and one lady's husband died. But she was so chaste to her husband that in her light body, she stopped death from taking him. Mm. Her body was so purified through her chastity, through celibacy, through brahmacharya, right. to her husband, that um, that she she like as he was getting pulled out of his body right. from from Yamaraj, the Lord of Death, mm -hmm. she went in her physical body, which was a light body, and took him back and brought him back. And brought in. him back right from her chastity and her love, her like. Right. And so there's other forces, like they're saying, this is like not eating this one thing. Celibacy is so powerful. They call that the, uh, what would they call that? The, oh man, the ultimate path. They call that the seventh island. Now the seventh island, because the first island, you can walk to it. <laughs> the next one, you can ride a bike to it. It's way out there. Sharks <laughs> is around it. And <laughs> you got to swim to it or try to catch a helicopter. A lot of people don't want to go there, but it exists. But that's the deeper levels of the spiritual game. Ramacharya. I want to keep going deeper and deeper. That's why breath there is a mind eating just leads to it. That's a minor city power. You start taking all these other powers as you keep growing. It don't end. It only stop when you want to. Doubt, unbelief, laziness, slothfulness. I just don't want to. All that has to do with fear. It is done with fear. <laughs> This is good, ain't it? Oh, man. Let's keep rolling. Like the physical sun, such a sin of body does not need energy or food from outside. Just like the physical sun. So don't we say everything is a, mirror, a reflection of ourselves? So when you look at the sun, it's actually a mirror reflection of you. That's you. That's just that real. So when they show you the dollar bill and the all C and I, they ain't talking about the Illuminati. They are talking about the Illuminati. Now, no people in no room across the world, they're talking about you. <laughs> the all see and I. That's wild, ain't it? <laughs> the illuminate one. That's like the books like the Zohar. That just talk about the radiant, you know, radiance. We got to pick it up. They're all talking about the process when you start coming into this. The Zohar, the Kabbalah. They ain't talking about nothing else, but just what we're talking about. Just a mythical language. Oh man, this is good. Keep reading. <laughs> this, this morning I was reading the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita and the first the first shloka of that chapter says, and first Krishna spoke this to the sun god. Right. And then the sun god passed it down. See and how I it's thought working? about and I thought about I thought about you because <laughs> you're you're putting everything in relation to the sun. Right. And so it literally says Krishna first spoke is to Ixvaku, who is that's the name of the sun god at right. that time. And then and then the sun god passed this down through like and it goes into the parampara like this. But first he spoke to the sun god. First he spoke to the sun god. The the, the energy force that we noticed there. So there's no play games. Everybody likes to talk spooky about an energy we can't prove. It's right there in everybody's face. Here, here I am. I don't want to look at you. Hiding from it. <laughs> but we admit it. It's right there. And we start using it now. And that's where the power is at. Giving it to you. Freely. This is good, eh? Because you want it. 
It creates its own food and even donates it to others. It creates its own food and even donates it to others. People start feeding off of you. Oh man, this is good. They can't handle the sun yet. They don't know. You, that's why you got to go in. <laughs> eat my body. Eat my flesh. <laughs> oh, man. This is like the real definition of selflessness. The real definition of selflessness. See, this is what keeps you in the game. Like I say, every time you change yourself, you change the world. You be wanting to meditate so you can go help everybody. You ain't even got to say nothing. This is good, ain't it? You ain't even got to expect the outcome. Mm -hmm. Just be. Like how you say that if you hear the love energy, you'll think it's like go love other people. The same way people think selflessness is like listen to a bunch of people's drama. Right. It's not. It's not. Selflessness is to develop this love energy and then give it to others. That's give it. it. For others. Now you hear that now. People got it backwards. I know a lot of people think that selflessness, but they mad that people are using them. I said, because you ain't doing it right. You don't understand. Mm -hmm. and then you got to question yourself, why did you keep doing that? Because you're looking for pity. Yeah. I'm such a nice person. And you're ah. me. That's all it is. <laughs> that is why Swami Ramalinda says in one of his prose works, I asked of God to give me a self-luminous body like that of the sun, and he immediately granted my wish. And we said that yesterday. He asked God to give me a a luminous body, and he granted my wish. But let's translate it. All he did was gave himself permission. That's like in the story of Enoch. What God was he talking to? Right here in his own mind. Well, yeah, let me give myself permission. But did he get a luminous body? That's, that's deep, ain't it? It ain't like God is picking and choosing. No, you might know that one, but you're not. I'll give it to you because we got this deal from Abraham. You ain't got nothing coming. Oh, man, what? <laughs> it ain't like that. The chosen ones are the ones they choose themselves. Yes. Right. The chosen ones that choose themselves. The whole flow is permission. The whole flow is permission. That's something in it. The whole flow is permission. You want to. Oh, man, this is good. Oh, he classified people into three categories. Oh, he did classify people into three categories. Check this out. Those who eat meat will go to hell's perpetual darkness. Hell Those, will not allow them to get out easily. Those who eat meat will go to hell's perpetual darkness, and they will not get out easily. They'll get out, but not easily. Now, let's translate what that means. Yeah. When you're dealing with food, <laughs> some foods are heavier than others. This is that kind. Some foods are heavier than others. The heavier the food, the longer it takes to go through the system. Your system will process it, but as it's going through that process, you just became one with the thoughts and stuff, so you just have to go through that season. So it'll be heavy, but if you perpetually eat meat, you're in hell, a lower state of consciousness. Because you're taking on the energy of like the slaughtered animals and whatnot. Right, you'll stay in there. But it'll be harder to get out because people have got addicted to it, so they keep going back all the time. Okay. Oh man, this is good, ain't it? Here we go. Those who eat vegetarian food will enter into the cycle of birth and death. And those who eat vegetarian food will go into the cycle of birth and death. And that's a lighter type of food. That's all you did was lighten up. You lightened up, so. You're at least in a cycle of life and death. You're feeling good one minute and then you go to sleep. You're feeling good one minute. The other person that's heavy all the time is like this. They just gave up. That's hell. The other one is at least feeling good and, you know, you got better. Now let's go to the other one. Those who take no food will become immortals and escape the wheel of samsara of life and death. And those who got no food will escape the cycle of death. Because you're going off a, a higher frequency vibration, not the lower ones. All it is is dealing with the vibration of the denseness to the lightness. Oh man, that's why you know you got a, a high vibration. The physical, emotional, and mental body will feel light. And you will experience happiness, joy, love, and peace. You will experience it just by being in that state. 
That's why everybody who's lighting up, he's smiling all the time. But there's no fake smile either. Uh, all right, let's roll. Therefore, purity of food is all important for the sinners. That's why purity of food is all important for, for the sinners. It's important to get those powers. That's why we were saying last night on the seven uh, levels of yoga, yeah. diet and exercise is first. Okay. If a person don't even recognize that, they ain't even in the spiritual game. I don't care how much they working out of a book. That's all they're doing. Yeah. You don't even recognize that. That's where the ball game is at. That's where it begins. Oh, man, this is good, ain't it? Because for you to even do that, you knew there was something wrong. That's why that's the beginning. You know how they say you know you're on the spiritual path when you recognize you're ignorant? That's the ignorance. You say, oh, wait, wait a minute, this is mine. Let me at least do something. Then we can talk. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Here is to Bhagavad's immortal couplet. Oh, give her a round of applause for that. She has to be so good for me. Oh, man. So this is for you time. did it. Yeah. Tamil's a whole nother. It's another la la la. Oh, la, 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 la. man. Wow. Non eating leads to immortality. Meat eaters cannot get out of hell. That's what the cup is. Yep. So, non eating leads to immortality. Meat eaters cannot get out of hell. Cannot get out of hell. One is distance, the other one is lightness. That's all it's saying. And that's what humanity is suffering with. They're just at the distance. Dense. They don't know how to get out. That's all it is. And all they got to do is let go. The world has changed. Oh, man. That's it. <laughs> that's why Buddha came out. The remedy was renunciation. If they were to listen to him, the whole world would have been one big giant ashram. And that's what we want. That would be cool. <laughs> right. We're going to get it. That would have been cool, but everybody couldn't handle it. They had to say, wait a minute, we got to come out of the levels of degrees. Right, right. And everybody's like, nah, I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to try it. Okay, y'all go on through that then. <laughs> Let's see what happens. High blood pressure, strokes, diabetes. That wasn't happening before. Right. Oh, man. Let's roll. So here a question of common sense arises. Now, oh, this is a good one. Here is where common sense arises. <laughs> We're going to common sense now. Let's listen at this. Does not one die without food? Yes, absolutely. If you don't take food, you will die, perhaps in 30 or 40 days of starvation. Oh, let's stop right there. Yeah. That's a deep question. Will a person die without food? Yes. Other than that, starvation wouldn't be on the planet. Yeah, you will. Oh, man. Didn't they just say that? That's common sense. So don't put tape on your mouth. Well, I'm fasting. You ain't fasting. You about to go die. <laughs> oh, man. Let's roll with it. If you eat food again, you will die perhaps after 50 or 100 years. Food only postpones your death, but makes it certain. Food, oh, it just postpones the death, but makes it certain. So all these little diet changes people talking about, that's the one, that's the one, they postponed it, but it's certain. Though it sounds like a paradox, <laughs> the solution has been found by the Siddhas and Chinese Taoists, who were also Siddhas. Siddhas means perfected being. Yeah, and check this out. Now notice how they went into the Taoists, the Chinese Taoists, and the Siddhas. They were working together, from two different cultures working together. So that's why sometimes when I'm teaching, I'm talking about Taoism too. The, the message is already there. No matter what system you take. You can talk about the yogic system, or you can talk about the, the Qigong Taoist system. It will lead you there. That's why they're it, it both there. Oh, man. They was working together. To put this together. Because we're all humans. Whether well, you're born on this planet, uh, on this, in this country or that country, it's the same knowledge mm -hmm. to, to achieve liberation exactly. in this world. And you're working with energy. The universal life force to sustain everybody. Oh, this is good. They had, they had communication between them, these powers and the Siddhas. The great Tamil Siddhi, Siddha Mahogar, is reported to have come from China. It's reported to come from China. Here we go. Right, because... 
the, the, how the story goes, you had some people who were dedicated to sitting there meditating. Now this word gets good. They got the meditation and the study. But they're sitting there every day. Have you ever heard of a guru belly? Yeah. yeah. A guru belly is when you sat down and meditated so much that they got this big old belly, but they got no movement. Yeah. Alright? So they say, at least the martial arts and the Tai Chi and stuff, it at least show you proper body movement. You got to move the body and the energy start channeling. So that's why they had to say, what's the use of doing all that meditating and studying if you're dying prematurely? You're sick because you're not moving and energy loves to move. So they showed them the movement and added it with it. And that's where the Shaolin Temple got started. Here we go. Oh, man. So that's why we saying people be fighting now. What, what exercise got to do with spiritual? Oh, they said they were a guru belly. You all blocked up and they think they third eye open. No, it's not. <laughs> we can see it. No put down. Move the energy and then do your studies and your meditation. This is what we say. It all must come together. <laughs> Let's roll with it. The economy of energy of the body is reduced to a minimum. Well, that's not this. Remember we said this is all about the, the economy of energy? And your body is good for energy conservation. We break, this is a machine in a way. Here we go. And then you talk about the economy of energy. Now listen how she says, slowly on each, each step. And I'll translate it for you. Don't move your body around too much. Don't move your body around too much. In other words, relax. Only movement is necessary. Don't be a busy body. See, I cut my life down. If there's something that ain't benefit my energy, why well, don't? That's what we're talking about. Do things you really meant to do for your energy. That's your energy. Just don't go spend it anywhere. Here we go. Stop all activities and sit in meditation. Stop all activities and sit down. That should be quoted. That should be quoted. Be quoted. I've been told it so many times. Right. And some people, I meditate, I meditate. No, you guys, you bounce it all over the place. I can tell. Go sit down for a minute. Some people hate sitting down. Always got to do something. That's where you're going to get the power from. There's, it, a, there's a wonderful quote that says you should meditate an hour a day unless you're too busy and then you should meditate two hours. Ah, <laughs> right. One more time. You should meditate an hour a day an hour unless a day. you're too busy and then you should meditate two hours a day. Oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's where the power is at. So through these, he's telling you. Let's go to the next one. Save all your physical and mental energy. Save all your physical and mental energies. In other words, again, use it wisely for, for things you really want to do, but stop giving it away for things that ain't even necessary. I don't run and try to do everything for people. Don't you help people? Yeah, when I want to. In the order in the way I want to. And one person was rushing me, and I had to tell him one day, <laughs> your mistake. <laughs> It's not for me to rush. That was your mistake. I'll be there when I get there, when I want to. Don't rush me. <laughs> You're claiming your energy, full responsibility. Right. Oh, man, that, that's not making you mean. No. i got to concern my energy. I know how I feel. Wait till I charge up. Don't rush me. <laughs> Sex life, you should be 
you you just ask to be born like a dog or a pig. Because they spend, they spend the whole life in sex life. Yes. This but this human life is not for sex. Even as much as we right. try to enjoy it, we don't have that capacity. Right. But animals do. You see them all day. They can go for it. It's no problem for them. Their body is made for that. It's made for it. They're made for mating and like we're not made for that. Even for reproduction, we don't need to have sex. Right. We don't. We don't. That's a that's a higher level. That's difference. what you were saying in the the movie that you uh, said. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this what, why did you say that? What is your thoughts behind it? I'm just curious. I'm not, how you see it? It's all energetic. So it's all energetic. You know, like how, how Jesus was born, Mary, Mother Mary. Right. right. Jesus. Immaculate, immaculate conception. conception. Yeah. Yes. So you all just need energy for it. You don't have to have a physical exchange. Right. And then look at look now even in that nature. If there's when you're dealing with fish, they, uh, they need to reproduce. The fish could go from a male to a female. But see, that's being dictated by the atmosphere. See, this is a living consciousness we're living in. There's some scriptures that keep teaching you that. You're living in a living mind. And then you'll see AIDS. Is it going to be a male or a female? If there's more males, it'll bounce it out soon. More females start being born. That happened in my family one time. There was a time there was uh, more females. Then all of a sudden, in the next generation, all these males start being, being born. But where did that knowledge come from? It was already in a big mind that balance it out. And we get to the level, how did you get in your body? You came from the big mind. That energy of Christianity is coming right here. That's how I was talking. Which is you. Oh man, this is good. Oh man, I went off to our tantrum for a minute. <laughs> the power of it. Save your semen. So we can use our sexual energy for something else. Save your breath. Save your breath. Oh man, save your energy. Here we go. Stop thinking and save your thought. Stop Ooh. thinking and save your thought. Oh man, that's a good one. Now let's interpret that. We were talking yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> save your thought. I'm, and I know y'all seen it. It could be a nice, beautiful day, but a person got so many problems and it's all right here. They don't even see the day, and it's taking their energy, and it'll take your energy listening to them. I quit a grip relationship one time. I had a real good friend. I got away from them because they was too negative. Mm -hmm. Always thinking overriding thoughts that they had nothing to do with nothing. And I'll be sitting there listening to them talking tight. <laughs> yeah. And I knew right there it was time to go. Mm -hmm. You're a good person, but I got to go. Oh, man, this is good. When, when you say save your semen, it just always pertains to, in my mind to uh, men. Because women don't have semen. So, like, um, what would you say about that? Because it doesn't sex affect the people. Well, a lot of the things dealing with celibacy, what they was talking about in the past, yeah. was directed to the male due to male chauvinism. Meaning, like, the masculinity. It, it went in all ranks of stuff. You know, when it came to society. The female was kind of put out of spirituality. But so now when we're coming back, yeah, there's female brahmachari. He's working with the same being, just turned inside out. So that was a hijack that took place. So are you saying that sex affects women? Absolutely. Go yeah. ask them. They sit right here in front of you. Yeah. Like, but, 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 no, 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 no. Like, I'm just like, after, like, after you have sex and you ejaculate, most men are tired. But for women, normally it's not like that. Let's go again, blah, 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 right? So, like, they don't, no, do, do you same, same thing. You know what I mean? It, it's even you guys go inside of us, so it's more effective for us. Just say it again? You go inside of us, so it's more effective for us. You mean we ejaculate inside of you? Well, you know. Not so much the ejaculation, <laughs> it's, it's a different way of you doing it, but it's still it's going to be the same effects at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them, you might think, some people think men got it made, and some think women got it made, but both of them is catching. Yes. <laughs> at the end of the day, right. Both expelling energy. And then there's those levels of attachment. And all, oh man, oh another subject. But a lot of it was hijacked due to, you know, male chauvinism. Yeah. But that's got broken now. Because I know women who's brahmachari now is real strong energies. And she has semen, but she got sexual fluids. She cultivated it. I met one up in the Himalayas. She said, 
Because she started laughing when I was talking about the power of celibacy. She said, well, I got that part. <laughs> she, she knew it. Oh, man. Powerful thing. And what I mean by powerful, so there's a thing, uh, a pheromone called copalines that the female usually give off. And that's for because the baby's usually with her when that takes place. The male, he could be gone somewhere else. But it's coming with her. So that have help with that baby. It's a pheromone that attracts either male or female to help her with the baby. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is good, hey. So that's a strong magnetic pull. And uh once you understand that, why wonder they kept the female out of Brahmacharya? <laughs> Once you understand that, why wonder they kept her out of it, just put the male. Yeah, she got the same power. Semen got power, but also the sexual fluids of the female is just as powerful. One's coming one way, one coming another way. That's why at the end of the day, for whether you're male or female, you become a drachomist. You're neither male or female. That's where it's fully cultivated. Oh man, this is good, ain't it? Just like martial arts. You got the hard arts and you got the soft arts. But if you get two students practicing them seriously, the energy will be the same at the end of the day. Whoa, this is good, ain't it? <laughs> now here we go, let's look at these how this energy economy is. So stop thinking and save your thought. Fast and save your gastric juices. Fast and save your gastric juices. Oh man, fast so you won't have to keep using all that energy to digest something again. Digest something again. Digest. Man, that's rough, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> save the gastric juices. This saving of all energies will enable you to take less of food. The saving of all those energies will enable you to take less food. There it is right there. So save your thoughts, save your semen, save your movement, save your gastric juices. Is that it? Yeah, you were listening. Your breath. Your breath. Like one, one place it said, like in, in Sanskrit, it says, uh, avoid the contemptible pr prostitute of mundane speech. She's a prostitute. A prostitute comes and takes all your wealth. She takes your money, she takes your semen, and she leaves. Robert. M mundane talk is like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just talk. About it. <laughs> that's a good. Takes everything and she leaves. All your intelligence. She ain't standing around saying it was all right. I don't care about what you did. Uh -uh. Everything gone. Mission complete. I'm off to the next place. Wow. Robert and Mike. So in other words, think about you know we're cultivating prana, but then being aware of how our prana is coming out. Mm -hmm. It's exactly. Right. Right. So you can cultivate it all day, but you're keeping it out by your thoughts. And Um, yeah. And that's why you know, you know, these higher shifts of mortality because you're not functioning like a normal person in, in modern society. You really are becoming more on the mind. Now look over the shot, uh, uh, Shana. Shana said, it's a monastic lifestyle. The breath area lifestyle is a monastic lifestyle. You're in the world, but you're living like you're in a monastery. Mm -hmm. That's real. Some people want to run to be a breatharian and still run around living that other lifestyle. We ain't talking that. Uh-uh. No. You, you just have many more Osho's, these types of personalities who have like, hundreds of different types of relationships with their disciples. And, right. And just destroy all these people's brain, their faith, you know? Right. They think this person's one thing and they find out they're having sex with everyone. Right. <laughs> then what happens? All those disciples lose faith. Right. That is huge karma because faith is the first transcendental emotion that we experience. Right. And so to destroy that and then you don't know how many lifetimes before that person can come back to the path. Right. This is deep game. Deep game. Deep responsibility. Deep responsibility. Whoa. Because destroy yourself. Like if I destroy myself. And I, that was a self. I heard the biggest sin in the spiritual game is to abuse your power. And, and that would be one society. Right. And that's in the world as itself. Like what we said, abusing the power. We learned how to, if you check it out, we learned how to use it. That's the economy of energy. And also seeing yourself as power. So it's, it's more embracing humility. Because humility is the first step towards the 
minus a D. There's a lot of power we're working with. So that's why the power is there. You have to grow into it. This is good, ain't it? That's a better end knowledge. It ain't holding back from you. You just growing into it slowly. This is good, ain't it? That's a lot of power. Well, what would it be this? You don't know how much power is there. Can't handle it. You can't handle it. Oh, man, that's something, ain't it? You can't handle that yet. We're not in it. You, that's why you don't even want to be in there. Now this is that's why they tell you, don't seek the power. The power will seek you, or you won't find it. Don't seek the power; it will find you. That's how it works. I ain't want no power. Uh uh, it can't mess with me. I'm like, go mess with somebody else. <laughs> but the best thing anybody can really do to change the world is to change themselves. That's it. Point blank. If you really love somebody that much, you don't want to see them suffer. You have to work that much more on yourself. That's it. Not, not give a round of applause. That's it. Yeah. So in other words, it's all about you. There is nobody else. It's your source. Because you're the source. Oh you man, this is good. That's why I said last time when I built that community, he said, I ain't do it for the people, I did it for me that I had somebody to talk to so I could grow. That was wild, wasn't it? It was all about you and everybody was changing, thinking about you. <laughs> but they are you. Nobody loses. Oh, man. So you ain't got to worry about the outcome. How am going to change my family and get them and that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's all right here. It's just that real. Oh man, this is good. Now what's the next one? Woo. That was a lot of food, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We were just eating. We eating. <laughs> That's a buffet. Oh man. <laughs> Unlimited. Unlimited. It don't end. Now listen how she said that before you continue. Now sometimes, and I got broken in when I went to India too. There was a time I was teaching. Then somebody else said, would you like to go there? Well, I need to rest, you know. And then I went to this situation where it was like, uh, this group caught you. This group caught you. But come to find out, I was like, man, I might need some rest. But I just got finished talking two hours there or something, teaching and But it, it was like you couldn't. But the more you kept flowing, not holding nothing back, more information started coming. More, that was it. And then this one guy, saying uh, we had a retreat. He said, we got a retreat plan. He said, every time stop talking to all of them. Let them come here. And if you don't talk to them, they'll come here, there, whatever. But how am I supposed to hold back what's coming to me? <laughs> <laughs> I went out there and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I couldn't hold it. But at the same time, more information was coming. And then he ain't get nobody to come in the retreat, no way. It was all following me like a pie piper. It was just flowing. Don't hold it back. It ain't yours, no way. That's it. Oh, man, that's the real business plan. Don't hold nothing back or the competition might get. There ain't no competition. <laughs> competition is separation. What if it's broken? Right. It's a false celebration. There it is. Never mind. <laughs> Competition needs a separation and oneness is broken and it's a false celebration. Here we go. That's the truth of the matter. Let it flow so you can grow. Are we rapping and stuff? <laughs> we might gotta get that. We need a beat. <laughs> we'll do that tonight at the campfire. I got you. I got you. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's roll. When I first went to India, that time my parents were like calling me a lot and I told my I said, like, my parents are calling, what should I do? Like, like I just felt, like, overwhelmed, you know? They said, don't do anything. Everything will happen. Like, mm -hmm. don't, don't, like, don't talk to them too much. Like, just do your practice. Don't worry about anything. Within, like, one year, my dad, who, like, was very wealthy, his company went bankrupt. He just so many things happened. And, um, and then, but it's all perfect. And that's what happens. Mm -hmm. I think you were saying something yesterday about like when you start to do everyone's lives around you start changing because karma is like one spider web. Right. You're like a spider, but everyone who has affection for you, they're attached to you within your karmic web. You start unraveling, they start unraveling. And and like now they're what happened is 
all of the ego that was attached to his company and all this stuff, it all destroyed. Now he's again very successful, but he's so humble. He has right. like a whole new like life, you know? Right. And he became vegetarian three years ago. He called me the other day and asked, what you learning out there? You learn anything good? Uh -huh. He said, you're going to come back and teach me something or what? Uh -huh. You know? He's like, his whole, his whole life, his mind has changed. And it all had to happen through, first we have to lose those things which we're so much identifying with. Exactly. So don't be scared because everyone's lies around you, you just see. It's like, this one will become disease. He said he just passed through Ohio and three people died. Right. Shh. Like people, it's like, you, it looks like it's destruction, but Shiva has to destroy for new things to be grown. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't be scared of that. Don't be scared of it. That's the fear-based frequency that needs to go so love can take over. This is what all we need to get rid of is the fear. And let, how we do that? Get, let, allow more and more love energy to come through the vessel. Oh man, ain't no technique. No, I get rid of my fear. Go up under the love. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go up under the shower of love. See I what happens. The spider analogy. Yeah, I'd love to hear this example you showed me, Catherine, of when you fill up something, the bottle, you fill it up and something goes out. What was that again? Yeah, they uh, like. Like some people, they just sit, how we were discussing last night with the mind. You can't stop the mind. Right. You know, there's nothing you can stop. Like if you have a bottle and you have some poisonous gas in there, the quickest way to get that gas out is to fill it with something else. That gas will come out. Mm -hmm. So fill yourself with love, with this love energy. All the lust, anger, fear, madness, illusion, all this stuff you're having inside, the transformation of these all things will go. Like it yeah, goes. Go. Like, just will go out. Including the Put the good things in. Including the food. Including the food. Now listen to how they said it. That's, That's the exactly. Brachiarian journey. Right here. It says once you follow these things, then then the need for food will be very less. Right. What you just read. Once you follow these things, the need for food will be very less. Oh, man. That's good, ain't it? They, they, they're giving it to us. <clears throat> oh, man. They ain't no <clears throat> fighting against it. Let the energy do the work for you. You just stay up under the shower. Here we go. Oh, man, this is good. Eventually, you would have accumulated so much of your energy in your body, you would not need energy from outside through food. Oh, man. Wait a minute. Read that again. 100% <laughs> true. Eventually, like, Eventually. This, this saving of all energy will enable you to take less food. Eventually, you would have accumulated so much of your energy in your body, you, you would not need any energy from outside through food. You would accumulate so much energy in your body, you would accumulate it so much, you won't need no outside food. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That's it. You but accumulate. It's not telling only don't eat. It's mm -hmm. telling all these things follow. And then first. All these things follow. First. First, this is what we talk about. That's why I says go slowly and gradually and watch yourself grow and eventually you won't need no food at all. When the body oh, becomes pure, a spoonful of honey and a cup of water will be enough for you for the whole day. When the body becomes pure, a spoon of honey and a cup of and water. And a cup of water. It's enough. People can't even handle that if you say that to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just making it real. What do you eat? Dude? You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's roll with it. Unlike now, the whole matter of food will be totally transformed into energy. Oh, man. The whole matter of food will be transformed into energy. Unlike now. Now, this, this next part really going to get good. Listen to how she's going to say it. Now more than 99.99% .99 of what we eat is turned into waste matter and excreted, excreted out of the body. 99% of what you eat is turned into waste matter. And excreted throughout the body. Now the process of digestion is a mechanical and chemical one. Then it will be an atomic one. Listen at that. Now the process is a biochemical one. Is a mechanical and, and a chemical one, but it will become an atomic and one. And then it will become an atomic one. So now it's a biomechanical one, then it will become an atomic one. And when we, how do you get to atomic energy? That's the love energy. They're both the same thing. And that comes through what? Going up under the shower. 
Meditation. You going for some love. You should be wanting to get loved all day. <laughs> Later when the body is turned into a pure body, it will, like a plant, start producing its own food. Whoa! Nectar would be secreted from the brain, and that's what they call the somaras. Right! Nectar would be produced from the brain. Right. Now it all making sense. This is um, Sanskrit, somaras? Somaras. It's like produced, uh, soma means moon. So right. how the moon is like cooling, nourishing, and it's like one drop. I guess it's dropping in the pineal gland, but it's actually, it's like they can, it's like a liquid, and it's dropping in it. it it's mm -hmm. nectar. They say it's like nectar from... Right. Absolutely. Is, is, is this the manna? The, um, well, that's the manna from heaven. Right. 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 Well, they say manna, they just use a different name. Right. But they're talking about the same thing. And it's coming from here. Right. Heaven. So that goes back to man's higher consciousness. He said, oh, you're going to be animating your body. He just using the word saying it's coming from here the way you're thinking because your body's producing the food. This is where it's coming from. But you have to develop this organ. The brain is going to, there's a development. They're going to talk about it. It needs to develop. Oh, come on. Oh, the process is twofold. First, understand how food conditions your body. And second, release yourself from that conditioning. Attain freedom from food. Oh, man. Wait a minute. Say that again. The process is twofold. The process is twofold. First, understand how food conditions your body. First, understand how food conditions your body. You're looking at it. All food corrupts the body. It conditions it. Second, release yourself from that condition. And release yourself from that condition. Attain freedom from food. And attain freedom from food. To attain immortality, man needs to obtain freedom from four things that lead him to death. <laughs> you tell us. Um, it's the, the two, two F's and the two S's. Yeah, the two F's and the two F's. So there's food and fear, and then sex and sleep. Yep. He got it down pat. He said the two F's and the two S's. Yeah. Food and fear. Sex and sleep. And sex and sleep. So That's a good way to remember. So immortality, man needs to obtain freedom from four things that lead to death. Food and fear, sex and sleep. This is a dictum of Swami Ramalinga. According to Tiru Valor, Valuvar, man willingly aboards four ships that take him to the land of death. Oh man, man willingly. All right, let's translate all right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's four new books. It's all getting good now. So she's going into, because we got that on what we were just talking about. Food's conditioning people, we got to get it now. The humanity's getting the memo. They, at least the doctors are saying, all right, what did you eat? All right, we got to look at this. Food industry, everybody know, is tore up. <laughs> tore up from the floor. Yes. All right, we got that. Now we got to release ourselves from that conditioning. All the humanity's talking about that. That's why this message is user friendly. They're just trying to say, where can I jump to next? Where can I jump to next? What's more user friendly for me? And then we get into release yourself. This is where brother and knowledge coming in. Just release yourself from the food and the problem's gone. Uh oh, we're talking big talk. Stop the problem, don't play with it. So now we went into the four things, but now she's going into what's slowing people up. Right. Now, so according to Tiru Valuvar, man willingly boards four ships that take him to the land of death. Procrastination, forgetfulness, laziness, and sleep. Whoa! He willingly boards those four ships. Procrastination, forgetfulness, forgetfulness, laziness, laziness, and sleep. And, sleep. and, and, and that is through, through eating those things automatically come or is it saying? A mindset. And he willingly boards those ships so he won't deal with that other mind. Laziness, procrastination. You know how people say, I'll put it off tomorrow. Right. Or when my situation changed, now, then I'll get started. You know, stuff like that. Or I would, but I got to wait till I get out of this relationship. You know, and, all these excuses. We, in, in yoga, we say anybody can practice yoga. The skinny man, the fat man, the tall man, the short man, the black man, the white man, the only man that can't do it is the lazy man. It's the lazy man. So that's why it's in there. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> So my grandpa used to say, whatever you need to do, do it today, and whatever you need to eat, eat it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whatever you need to do. Ah, oh, do it now. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's a good one. So we got all these good quotes coming out, telling us to pay it. So free yourself from these four, and you will be free of the clutches of death. 
Whoa, free yourself from those four. It, it will... You'll be free from the clutches of death. Free from the clutches of death. So that's why this is not for a lazy person, this journey. Not no people who come and not, don't put down no judgment. They're just lazy. Then let's repeat the four again, please. <laughs> Procrastination, forgetfulness, laziness, and sleep. Right. They're lazy. Life chaotic and they just don't... Like somebody got to grab them by the hand, this ain't for them. Not yet. Now you can break those patterns, but they got to know what it is. And I got a friend who, what do you tell you? Yeah, I'm lazy. So we don't even talk to breath here and all this. Why? <laughs> all right. This is good, ain't it? Oh, man. Let's roll. So the evolutionary theory of the sinners. All right. Let's take a time out on this one. The evolutionary theory of the sinners. So we'll take about a 10-minute break. Oh, man. I'm going to go get something to eat. Can I win then? <laughs> oh man, that was a lot of food flying. Whoa, oh man.